I am deeply grateful for receiving the BBVA Foundation Frontiers of Knowledge Award and for sharing it with Isabel Guillon and Vladimir Wapnik. I am humbled by the group of inventors, both artists and scientists, whose company I am joining. With two cohorts of BBVA prize winners in the room today, how can one hope to ever be in a similar company again? The BBVA prize is very special to me for two reasons. It is awarded in Spain, I will come to that later, and it's unique in its breadth. It gives special prominence to fields crucial for our future, ecology, climate change and information technology. Why is information technology crucial for our future? The first industrial revolution was enabled by the steam engine and water power. The second one was driven by electrification. So both were about how to generate and convert forms of energy. The current transformation has been called the digital revolution, but it really started already in the mid 20th century under the name of cybernetics. Its protagonist is not energy, but information. Like energy, information can be processed by people, but to do it at an industrial scale, we needed to invent computers. Like energy, information may be a conserved quantity, so we may not be able to truly generate it. As in the two industrial revolutions, we observed two phases in the current transformation. The first one was driven by the birth of computer science, the development of programming, and the beginnings of symbolic artificial intelligence. That is, the hope that we can make computers truly intelligent by instructing them to manipulate symbols according to programs written by us. In this phase, computers processed information that was specifically prepared for them. In other words, the symbols were provided by us. The second phase, taking place now, unlocks a new information source by cleaning patterns in unstructured data, such as real-world images. The enabling technology for this is machine learning, and today AI is almost a synonym for machine learning. A particularly elegant way to do machine learning uses a mathematical similarity measure called a kernel. Isabel, Vladimir, I and others applied those kernels to generalize a range of linear learning algorithms to nonlinear settings while preserving the simplicity of the linear method to allow an analysis in terms of statistical learning theory. We were also able to generalize linear algorithms to data that was non-vectorial and uh, structured in various ways. Working on those topics uh, with Vladimir, Isabel and others such as Alex Mola and Chris Burgess was truly exciting. And once you've tasted how it feels to be part in discovering or creating something genuinely new, you are addicted to the big questions. But the story does not end here. AI moved from a symbolic stage towards machine learning, and now it may be starting to move towards a causal stage. We recognize that an understanding of the world cannot be built on mere correlations, but it requires knowledge of what happens when we intervene in a system. This will take us one step closer to computers that think in the sense of Konrad Lorenz. That is, they, they act in imagined space. We have devoted the last decade to the problem of causality, including the basic problem of how to distinguish cause and effect from observations. Like machine learning, this is beginning to have impact in science and technology. As a hobby astronomer, I was happy when one of our causal learning algorithms helped find new exoplanets, and one of them turned out to be the first exoplanet in the habitable zone where atmospheric water was discovered. The first two industrial revolutions had major consequences for all our lives, and the ongoing one may be similar. In fact, it's our information processing abilities and not our physical strength that make us human. Machines that process information touch the human condition in more subtle ways than machines that are merely processing energy. We are beginning to see this in many ways. AI can diagnose diseases, manipulate information, influence elections, even help build weapons that take autonomous decisions without being accountable. This is one reason why we should study and understand AI in Europe in a broad sense. Machine learning is technology built by people to serve purposes. Those purposes are bound to human culture and ethics. 
If we do not want to become mere consumers of technology invented elsewhere, built on values we may or may not share, it is crucial that the state of the art of AI is researched and invented in Europe, embedded in our open societies. We have no knowledge of the future, but we can influence it. This is one side of Shannon's duality between future and past. Vice versa, we cannot influence the past, but we have knowledge of it. And I can thus try to give thanks to those without whom I would not stand here today. The BBVA Foundation and the prize jury for the great honor of this award, the Max Planck Society, my students, postdocs and collaborators for their support, insight and trust. Mi familia, que ha llevado la carga de compartir su vida con un científico. Espero que también hayan sido recompensados en ocasiones, quizás al ser parte de esta maravillosa ceremonia, aquí en el País Vasco, donde nació mi esposa Ana.